You good? <laughs> a little tired, but overall pretty good. All you need is an iPhone. You need to be passionate about sports. And I was like, that sounds like me. <laughs> Listen, I'm all for that. I'm Puerto Rican, so I'll, okay, love. I'll take that too. <laughs> love, love. Larry, what's up? Thank you for joining us. And what up, what up, what up? Of course, no problem. <laughs> So let's get right into it. You're you're widely known as a sports creator. How did you even start in this lane for yourself? Man, that's a great question. Uh, a kid that was that just wanted to be a part of something and hustle. You know, um, I was in college during the time. I believe around you know 2014, 2015. I met uh, people at overtime. They, I went like, actually, I got there just via a, a friend. Uh, he hit me up. He was like, yo, you want to go to this happy hour? I was like, yeah, of course. I want to get a drink or two. Let's do it. Um, but it turned out that uh, we were in Soho. We were just in this, like, in this lively room. And it caught my attention when they stopped the party and they were like, uh, we're looking for, you know, creators. All you need is an iPhone. You need to be passionate about sports. And I was like, that sounds like me. And all those checks were just going off in my head. And, um, yeah, so that I started with. With overtime before um it was even named overtime it was called tally and it, they actually had an app all user generated content um and yeah that i was i was doing that for for like two months until they offered me a summer internship and then i did it for that summer and i was the only intern uh like that lived in nyc so i was the only one that like you know that kind of like stood around except my boy tom uh but so I, I, I right after I was like, hey, I want to continue to be a part of this. Please, like, I'm gonna be going to class like three days out of the week. Can I can I pull up to OT two days out of the week? But I was and at the same time I was still working a full time job. So it was just a lot of like I said, it was a lot of hustle. But um, really wanting to be a part of something. So how do you go about pitching yourself to you know a platform like Overtime? Because that's, I think that's one of the things that creators always try to figure out it's like how do you pitch yourself how do you grab the attention of a platform or a company that you're interested in collaborating with or partnering with or working for so how was that process for you yeah that process was it was it was great actually because to be honest i wasn't on camera for for the first like year or so first year and a half because i was really behind camera and building community so i was my title was uh director of events and basically, uh, I was just in charge of making sure that we had a point of contact and we had the in in every kind of AAU event or just a uh, park around the city. And I would just, I would just say, I would just say like, just try, like, you know, want just want to try new things because, and just continue to be yourself because, uh, the CEO and, and just like other top executives were, were kind of seeing my, uh, my Snapchat while I was also being the, the director of events. They were like, oh, like you have like, you know, kind of some charisma on, on the camera. Like, you know, you could, you, could, you could do your thing, you could host. So then that's when they asked me like, oh, do you want to host the Overtime Challenge? So I would just recommend just being yourself and trying to just get your foot in the door in the first place. Cause that's really the key, you know? Um, and then everything else is just is the domino effect. Cause you know, people feeling your vibe and uh, you know, they want to pick your brain and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, that's a similar thing that happened to me. I started up working behind the scenes before I went in front of the camera later on. Oh, wow. And like you said, like, it's just about getting your foot in the door so then you can establish those relationships with people and establish the relationships with the people that can see your potential and then eventually put you in front of the camera. So it's not always about chasing the camera opportunities, but just chasing the opportunities that allow you to build those relationships. And then, of course, you got to have passion. Same exactly. thing for me. <laughs> you know, came from, I have a sports background too, did sports journalism, played soccer. So, it, oh, nice. you know, it, yeah. So being able to start with that passion point and then perfect your craft has really helped along the way. And um, so earlier, uh, my, my publicist, Mike, was kind of joking with you about this. And I'm actually curious too, because you have so many names you use. You got Larry <laughs> Lindo, Larry Jamel. Larry, was it Mar Marsac? Was Marsac. Marsac? Marsac, Marsac? Marsac, yeah. Like what? Wait, break it down <laughs> for us. Like what? What is with all these names? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna break it down because you know you gotta have like a, a bunch of different you know extra characteristics you know. So Larry Jamel, that's just my my stage name now. Um, Jamel is my middle name. Larry is like you know what 
what Lawrence, you know, got shortened to. So Larry Jamel, that's like, that's my ad. That's the ad that I rock with right now. And I would say is my stage name. Lottie Lindo, that's just like when I'm, when I'm fly, when I'm, you know, I just, I got a fly fit. I'm looking at the toe, I'm feeling myself. I'm Lindo today, you feel me? So I'm Lottie Lindo. And then, <laughs> and uh, Larry Marsash, Marsash is my last name. Uh, yeah, and Larry just, you know, uh, shortened Lawrence. So Larry's Marsash is more like, you know, what I rock with for, for my LinkedIn or, uh, I, I rock with Lawrence Marsash, but then, but that's just like you know when my when my pops is like mad at me, he's like Lawrence. So that's like the only time I hear that, or like my high school friends. Like if you know me from high school back in the day, that's what you know. That's what it was called. <laughs> oh my gosh! That yeah. You, so you have like a you have like a, a Rigo Suave uh, personality with that Larry Lindo. Oh, oh for sure. <laughs> oh for sure. <laughs> that's so funny, but. You know, with all these different personalities and all these different names that you have, it, it shows a transition for yourself. It shows that there's multiple sides to yourself. And there's also multiple sides to your journey. And the journey of being a creator can be challenging. Everyone, It can, it can look very glamorous, but there's so yeah. much more to it. And like you said, you started out with overtime and you transition away from overtime. And now you go from overtime Larry to the multitudes of names that you have. So how has that transition been like for you? Uh, the transition has been, has been cool. It's been smooth. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm not with the, you know, with the machine anymore. Well, over time, like you could, you could, you know, sit down in a, in a, in a pot in a studio and you could have eight pieces of content cooked up for you by the, by like, you know, by the next day. So I'm not with that machine no more. So it has been harder having to, you know, do everything on my own. Uh, I, I like, but it, it has tested me and it, it's made me continue to believe in myself. I've always believed in myself. And that's why I even took that leap of faith uh, because I, I already felt that, yes, I built my following. I, I have an audience. I understand how to create content. I know how to produce my own videos. I understand long form content. Like I just understood that uh, the tools and, and everything that I learned from overtime, I, I felt like it was that proper transition. And I feel like, so far, so good. I've, I've, I've done a commercial. I've um, that did another cameo on Swagger, uh, season two, and I'm still doing like you know brand deals and still creating my own content. Uh, so yeah, and I own everything, which is beautiful. But how is it? You know, you said it's been pretty great. Uh, but how do you establish, or how have you been going about establishing? Like, hey, I'm no longer. Overtime Larry, like I am just Larry, like this is me. Because I, I'm sure that people probably still call you that. They still associate it with that, you know, the big machine company. So what have you been doing to really stand on your own and set your brand on, on your own um, since leaving Overtime? Yeah, I would say uh, I, like a month or so after I left, I kind of made, I kind of made a, you know, like a dope video, like in a, a different type of aesthetic style. Uh, letting people know that yo, know, I go by Larry Jamel, or you know, better known as because I was feeling myself Larry Lindo, uh, and and yeah, since then just been continuously like you know trying to let my followers know like yo, this is what I'm on. I'm on to I'm on a new journey. I'm on a new path. I even need your support now, double the time to, <laughs> as I I've, as, as I once had it. Uh, so yeah, just like yeah, and making it sure, making it making it known like every time i'm introducing myself is larry jamel it's larry jamel i'm never twisting myself i'm never and, and 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 if anybody's asking me like or or comes up to me like yo overtime larry what up i just let them know like yo what's going on bro like yo it's just larry now uh but yo con continue to follow me here you still got my act like and i, and I still kind of you know make sure i tap in with the community no that's really good and I think that's really good that you you notify your followers that like okay no I go as Larry Jamel now no longer overtime and it's a process when you go through that rebranding um, or removing yourself from such a big platform but um, I think that the process of doing that and just the overall process of being creator there are some things that are misunderstood because you know people only see the ending product they only see the content they don't see what happens behind the scenes. So from your overall experience, what do you feel like is is and are things that are misunderstood when it comes to being a creator uh, consistently and full time? 
Okay, I would say first and foremost, things aren't as glamorous as it seems because, uh, like, being an independent creator, um, like, if you don't have kind of a, a manager, an agent, X, Y, Z, uh, it's going to be hard. Sometimes it might be harder for those opportunities to come to to come to your doorstep. Uh, so I would say that consistency of working with, you know, getting brand deals or like really not being able to monetize your content. So I feel like that, that's what I would say is, is the first and foremost thing that people get it twisted. Um, yeah. Otherwise, other than that, I think it's, it's dope. You know, if you stay, if you stay, as consistent as possible and you and uh you i feel like you collaborate with the right people and uh ingest the right type of you know content podcast i feel like you know you can grow in this space i feel like you know in, in this creator industry nowadays and in this generation we all have the power it's all it's in our pockets it's, you know i'm talking into it right now our phones like you know what i'm saying we all have that opportunity so we all got the same 24 hours. What are you doing with yours? That's how I tell people every time when they're asking me about, oh, I, what, how you did that? How you did that? Just like, man, I just you know, put my head down, had an idea, and got to it. That's it. Simple. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, in that process, there's things that you're going to have to do that <clears> – there's going to be things that you have to do where – like you said, uh, you're going to have to find those opportunities for yourself. You're going to have to grind. You're going to have to network. You have to do some of the not-so-fun things. But I think that one of the beautiful aspects of being a creator is that you have the opportunity to be yourself, and you have the uh, opportunity to bring your identity into what you do, which you're already doing it even right now. You're a New Yorker. You got the Yankees hat on, <laughs> and you're Dominican. And for those who don't know, you know, lindo, you know, masculine form, and linda, feminine form, is beautiful, handsome. So for you, you clearly are implementing a lot of your culture into, and your identity and who you are into what you do. I mean, I do the same thing as well. And so how do you, how does, like, how much does that contribute to, like, what you create? Like, how much do you instill who you are, where you're from, and your identity into your content? Okay, I want to I wanna let her be known. I'm Dominican and Puerto Rican, too, because my mom, if she sees oh, me, she'll be, she'll be okay, high. Okay. She'll be high. Listen, I'm all for that. I'm Puerto Rican, so, I'll, okay, love. I'll take that, too. <laughs> love, love. Well, yeah, so I would say the way that it's incorporated with my day-to-day -day and just my content in general is uh, – it's just how, because how I was raised, you know, uh, being from my background, you know, you learn, you know, the morals, like about that hard work. So that's why I, I, I still see my parents wake up every single morning, get to work every 6 a.m. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's a, it's a different type of mindset. And that's what they, you know, they trained me since I was a kid on that type of time. Um, and yeah, you know, just bringing my flavor. Uh, I might be a little loud sometimes. I might, you know, roll an R here and there when not when it's not necessary. But that's just that's just me, and that's really. And I'm born and raised in New York, from the from the Bronx. Lived in the heart of the city by Times Square since I was 11. So all I know is just like you got to get to it, you know. And it's a, a certain type of hustle mentality, grind, um, and respect that I just carry for like who I am and where I come from and the thing, you know, the people I represent. Do you feel like where you're from, your family, your upbringing, do you feel like that's like your quote unquote superpower? A thousand percent is definitely my superpower. <laughs> and, and just being able to like, I would say also to make people comfortable, all types of people, all walks of life um, from different backgrounds I, I'm like I, I'm from New York City, the most diverse city in the world. That I I believe so, um, and it's just a pleasure sometimes to just learn and and you know let everything like forget everything that I know and just be an open book to learn. And that's what I, I feel like is a is a superpower of mine, uh, being able to just be compassionate and uh, and give others a voice, you know, and and just make sure that I'm seeing others, you know. And as part of that learning process, is there anything that you've learned about the sports industry or sports as a content creator? Was there things that made you surprised? Did it make things better for you as a fan? Did it make it worse? Were there things that you were shocked about coming in, being a content creator in the sports space? 
No, everything is is everything that I've seen. I feel, to be honest, has been eye opening. Um, I've been in rooms and places where I didn't think that I would. I would. I thought that I would be in them in life, but I didn't. The way it just happened, it just it happened beautifully, and I just thank God for that. Uh, but yeah, every, everything I don't know. I've been in. I, I've been able to host shows. I've been able to. Uh, actually just have one-on-one conversations where athletes see their grind. Like, they, like to be a professional athlete is a whole nother level. And people, as a fan, I, I like, well, working in sports, I just, I learned that even more. And I never took, I never discredited any athlete that's a professional. Because I play, I play the sports at a collegiate level. And obviously, I wasn't good to be on, wasn't that good to be a professional. So, you just got to give it up where credit's due. And I just been, I feel like, it's, like I said, it's been eye-opening. It's, it's been a vibe since I've been working in sports. And in, in sports, there are very passionate fans. And, oh, for uh, sure. <laughs> and especially, you know, New York fans. And, and I'm sure when it comes to sports, you deal with rivalry fans, a.k.a. Boston and so mm. forth. How is that experience in your content where – you know, you can be a fan of a sports team, but you got to sometimes do content maybe with rivals or other places and stuff like that. Like, how is that overall? <laughs> hey, it's crazy. it's crazy as it sounds. It's very hard for me to do any other baseball content <laughs> that is not with a Yankee hat. You know what I mean? To be honest. Like, I, I gave it an exception. I wore L.A. out. I was L.A. Dodgers out because I threw out the first pitch out there in 2018. But I like I don't, you. You're not catching me, you know, doing content probably for the for the Red Sox. It has to be. It has to be a game changing bag. <laughs> but uh, or or like you know the Mets. If they they ask me, you know we we. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm just not. I'm not even gonna go there. I can't. I can't do it. You're like I'm too loyal. I'm too loyal. I'm, I'm too loyal. It's it's Yankees, uh, Knicks, Giants. You know that's how that's how we rock Rangers. That's how we rock in New York. See, listen. No matter what, you cannot lose your diehard fandom. No check. <laughs> no, no check. No nothing's gonna stop that for you. But at least you know, even though you may not be able to do those content pieces with uh, the Red Sox and some others, it, it you still have opportunities to do other kind of content, and some of it is a little bit different than what you may be used to. So, for example, you mentioned earlier. You had a cameo in Swagger, and congrats yeah. to that, by the way. Thank you Talk so much. Talk to us a little bit about that. You're welcome. Talk to us a little bit about that and, like, what – how did that come about for you? <laughs> so it's crazy. The way that it came about, actually, uh, they – I still remember this 2019, October, they sent me an email, and uh, they were like, oh, Larry, like, we want you to play yourself in this, in this Apple TV show called Swagger. I'm like, wow, this is sick. Um, send me the dates. What are the dates? Uh, they send me the dates, and during those times, I actually had already trip booked to Japan. It's gonna be my first time in Japan. I dropped a lot of money for this. Now I'm going with the homies. Like this, it's been planned out. I told them no, I can't go. I can't. I can't do the. I can't do the shoot because I'm going to Japan. I'm sorry. So whatever, I left to Japan. They we. It, so I pushed on it actually, and couple months later, they actually hit me back up. They're like, oh, Larry, like, well, what happened was, like, we tried and we need you. So a couple months later, I came back and I shot with them. Um, so I was actually in episode one of season one uh, and also episode eight of season one. And it was it was a beautiful experience because I'm, like, I'm on my first, you know, TV film set. And mm-hmm. th- this is like, this is like, I was like, damn, I'm, I made it to the big leagues right now. And it felt fun. I was just like, this is where exactly where I need to be, where I want to be, and how I'm going to get better. Um, even, you know, when you have those moments of doing something new, you get those kind of like that butterfly feeling. You might sweat a little more than extra. I'm sorry, than usual. Um, but once you do it, it's like, damn, I just did that. I bodied that. And I was, I was supposed to be here, you know? So... After so episode eight, when I did that scene, I had my own scene, um, and it was, it was like I was like, "Damn, I'm I, this is like this is why I need to start acting even more because I, I did that, I did that, I felt happy about myself, and it was crazy because I was working with a whole new director, 
It, it was really cool, like three, four different cameras in the face. It was a blast. And then they called me back for season two because uh, they renewed. So I was happy that they called me and I was in episode one again. Uh, yeah, and then I had scenes with O'Shea Jackson Jr. and the cast and um, and Orlando Jones. So these are two respectable actors. I'm in scenes with them. And I feel like that just growing my portfolio and just like, you know, just beneficial for my reel. It's awesome. Oh, yeah, no, it definitely sounds awesome. Is this like, you know, this is a, a step in a, in a different kind of content direction for you. Do you plan on going more into acting? Are you planning on trying different directions um, content wise, work wise that maybe people don't necessarily know you for currently? Um, definitely, definitely want to continue to act. I already actually wrote a pilot. Um, yeah, I'm I'm writing a lot lately, whether it's TV shows, uh, movies, and yeah, eventually, like the goal is to to be able to get it produced, and uh, and I'm also cooking up. I'll never, you know, stop cooking up digital content. I have some. I have a new show coming out, uh, highlighting New Yorkers and their stories. Uh, it should be dropping. I would say October, early October. So yeah, I just wanted to plug that one as well, but. Yeah, just uh, digital media, acting, uh, yeah, writing more. That's what I'm on. What's your overall inspirations? Like, where, where do you, you want to go? Like, you, you went from Overtime Larry to Larry Jamel. Like, where do you want to go five to ten years from now? That's an amazing question because uh, I want to continue to travel the world, uh, to be honest. That's, like, a main thing. I want to continue to spread my brand internationally. With overtime, I was able to travel a good amount of places, and during the time, I was able to travel on my own, uh, and able, and I was able to uplift, like you know, the community that 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 they, they knew me in these specific places. I still remember in Korea, I was I like I did the you know the Google Translate. I was saying that oh, I'm gonna go to this park at 3 p.m. and I did the Google Translate, put it on my story, and I had like 10 kids there. So just being able to like do this in different places in london i had 80. i was able to like uplift these communities all overseas and they they know me because of content the people i collaborated collaborated with um done interviews with so i was just like damn like i love this i love being able to like actually like you know hang out with my fans hoop with them chat with them give them advice learn from them uh that's what i feel like i want to continue to do uh and in the meantime continue to act commercials um hopefully you know obviously like you know get my own things boom i want to be an ep on on my projects whether i'm whether i'm in them or not like i just want to be an ep on them and you know yeah that's really what i want <laughs> so much in store for you so much coming up uh we're super excited to see everything you have in store especially your series highlighting new yorkers but oh thank you uh, this yeah, of course. And this is the last question. I always ask the guests this question. What's the one advice that you want the listeners and viewers to walk away with? What is that real gem you want to drop? Mm, yeah, that's a good question. That's really good. Um, the one gem that I would like the viewers to to make sure that they write it down and they know after this is... is that you got to continue to believe yourself, believe in yourself no matter what, uh, whether the opportunities haven't been coming in lately, make sure that your vibe is always high because that's what you're going to attract. And just continue to stay on a high frequency. Uh, like I said, ingest great content, good music, uplifting, uh, like hang out with people that are going to uplift you, not blow yours. Uh, so... Yeah, that's what I would say. Just continue to work on yourself and be you. Be you and bring that great energy, which you did today. Larry, <laughs> once again, thank you so much. Where can everyone find you on social media? Hey, y'all can all find me on social media at Larry Jamel on Instagram, on TikTok, on LinkedIn. It's Lawrence Marsash. You know, we, let's, let's get it. I'm, I'm ready. I'm working. Uh, that the energy has not left and it will never leave. So hit me up. <laughs>
Absolutely. Hit him up and check out his content. Once again, thank you so much, Larry. And thank you to all of the viewers and listeners for tuning in. Drop a comment. What was your favorite part of today's episode? Make sure, of course, you follow us on all platforms, YouTube and audio. And if you enjoyed this episode, well, we have much more in store for you later on. Until then, this is Real Gems with Aaron and Ashley Simon. I'll see you later.